The iPad Pro is a pretty compelling device and there's some really good reasons why you'd maybe want to pick one up now but there's a lot of reasons why you might want to just hang fire just a few more weeks to pick up what could be on the horizons and we're going to go through some of those on this video. Now the first thing I'm going to say about any form of technology and I say this time and time again is buy what you need today. If you have a need to pick up a tablet that has something like the Apple Pencil and you need to be able to do the note taking and the drawing and the art side of things and you want to go for that productivity tool and you need it for your business or your workflow then don't wait. There's always a time and a place to buy these things to get the most value for your money but at the end of the day if you have a need for it then just go for it. If it's right for you today it's going to be right for you in the next few months to a year or so. So you know what just take the plunge. However if you don't have a pressing need which to be fair most of us most likely don't have a pressing need to buy an iPad then there are some reasons why you might want to hang fire before buying. So the first reason is that the iPad Pro 2020 didn't really break any new ground. We got a slightly beefed up GPU and they changed the CPU ever so slightly, but for the most part it looked identical and it performed very, very similarly to the previous iPad Pros from 2018. So there wasn't much ground broken in that respect. Yeah, we got an improved camera and we got the LiDAR sensor on there, but realistically it didn't have many real world implications. So for most people it didn't make that much of a splash. For that reason alone, it's absolutely worthwhile just hanging fire to see what else is on the horizon. And if you are in that state where you need to buy something today, then trying to get a refurb of the 2018 iPad Pro is absolutely the way to go. Or more likely, going for the iPad Air 4 because that is an amazingly good product especially at the price point they have it at at the moment. Now, just because the current generation of iPad Pro isn't the most groundbreaking in the world isn't a reason to hang fire on its own. But with some of the things that are hopefully coming in terms of the chips and the processors for the next iPad Pro, that's definitely worthwhile hanging on for. Whatever they go for, if it's an A14X or an A14Z, things should look a pretty damned interesting. And considering how good this current generation of A14 processors and then the M1 processors are in the current lineup of Apple Silicon Macs, we could be in for something that is especially tasty. Apple blew it out of the water with the M1 MacBooks and I reckon they're going to do something very similar with the A14Z or X. They're going to be pushing that power envelope whilst keeping it a very productive, portable and battery efficient machine. And hopefully one of the things that we're going to start seeing is as those chips share the same architecture, we will start to see more pro applications coming across onto the iPad Pro. One of the things that really holds the iPad back at the moment is Although there are some really good applications on there to help you get your work done, there is definitely a disparity between what you get on macOS versus something like iPadOS. And now with macOS being able to run a lot of the applications that run on iPhone and iPadOS, there is starting to be a sort of unity between those applications. And if the next iPad can get a lot more power behind it, which we're most likely going to see, then it makes sense that we're going to see a lot more pro applications coming across and seeing unity between what we get on a macOS versus something like the iPadOS. So so that is something to hang on for. If you're in the market for an iPad Pro, chances are you have some kind of workflow that requires that horsepower and that form factor. And wouldn't it be nice if you could use all the same applications that you're used to using on your Mac OS device on your iPad? I know personally that would be a killer feature for me. So hanging fire just that little bit longer means you'll get a more powerful processor and Apple are killing it in that respect and chances are we will start to see unity between applications that will take advantage of those new generation of processors and something that most likely won't be available on previous models. Power aside, a rumor is showing off that we will be seeing a new screen technology and the iPad Pro is going to be the first thing that's going to take advantage of Apple's new mini LED displays. Now what that means is you'll get better contrast with the device, much better battery life as well and it'll allow for the devices to become a little bit smaller. So whether or not that's slimmer, hopefully not, hopefully they just take advantage of that and put some more battery in there. Who knows what they'll do, but these screens are going to be better pretty much all around. So again, it's one of the first things that you see on the iPad, and if they can make that even better than what they've already got, then that is something to be looking forward to as well. And I can't wait to see what that actually looks like in something like an iPad Pro. Now, I doubt we're going to see this, but this is one of my dreams that I keep on hoping that we'll see eventually from the iPad. But if they're able to use a new screen technology, get more battery life in there, hopefully we'll start to see something like an iPad Pro Max or an iPad iPad Pro Plus or whatever they're going to call it and we see something along the lines of a 15 inch iPad Pro. Now I know a lot of you are probably going to crucify me in the comments because who wants a tablet that big? Well Microsoft brought it to the market and it sold extremely well and given how light and thin these things are it would definitely make a lot of sense especially if Apple bundled it up with a magic keyboard it becomes a real productivity device. 
Being able to use things like Sidecar to use it as an external display for my MacBook, oof, there are so many possibilities. I hope Apple bring that forward. Chances are they're not gonna. I haven't seen any rumors or leaks at all to the contrary, but who knows, maybe we will finally see that as they really try to push that pro market. And especially if we get some of those pro applications. Here's wishing. And one of the final reasons that you wanna wait for the 2021 iPad Pro is the inclusion of 5G. Now this is only gonna to apply to some of you guys out there in the market. A lot of people just go for the Wi-Fi only model, but if you are a road warrior, you know, once this virus finally disappears, and you're somebody who likes to work out in the field and has a need for this sort of device, then 5G is gonna be pretty much guaranteed to be included with the next iPad. Apple went full hog with the last iPhone, so I can't see them missing out on this time round. So I reckon that is definitely a guaranteed thing that will be on the iPad. Now it's up for debate how good 5G is in your country and in your locale, but you ultimately want to future-proof your devices. And by having 5G in that, you're ultimately doing that. You're gonna be able to take advantage of this next gen of wireless technology. So it's definitely something to be thinking about when making your buying decision. That's all well and good, and that's a few of the reasons why you should be hanging fire to see what comes out. And to be fair, we're not that far off. We're in February at the moment, and March is just around the corner, and Apple are rumored to be having an announcement at some point in March. They did last year, and hopefully we will see it again. But there are a few reasons why you probably don't want to bother waiting for the iPad Pro 2021. We're going to go through those quickly as well, so the, take these into consideration. So one of the first reasons why you probably don't want to wait is if you're already a fan of this form factor. There are no real rumors that the form factor is going to change particularly much. It already has a good screen. It's already pretty powerful and can handle most things that you throw at it. And if you just want that thin, light and powerful form factor, the iPad Pro already delivers on all of those marks. So if it's a new form factor you're after, Unfortunately, this year it's probably not going to be making an appearance. The next reason is that the iPad Pro 2018 is already a really, really reasonable price if you get it on Apple's refurb website. So there are some really good deals to be able to get on that already. I personally use the iPad Pro 2018 and it is an absolutely killer device. It still performs as well today as it did on the day that I got it and it handles everything that I throw at it. So hopefully, as I've said, we will start to see some more pro applications that take advantage of the new hardware that comes in the 2021 model. But we might not and it might take a long time before those applications move across and Apple might put it back through to previous generations. So. Who knows? At the end of the day, the 2018 already offers a killer price. And if you're in for that sort of budget, then you know what? It's worthwhile just buying one of those now whilst they're still available. And one of the final reasons why you probably don't want to bother waiting for the next iPad Pro is if you're actually using this as a productivity tool, so it's for your business, for your creativity, for your work or anything like that, then the M1 Max are absolutely amazing. In terms of the price, they absolutely decimate the iPad Pro. If you include all of the additional extras you're gonna to need to really take full advantage of the iPad Pro. I mean, you just need to look at the starting price of the iPad Pro and then throw in a magic keyboard and potentially an Apple Pencil and all Already, you're really going toe to toe with the pricing of a MacBook Air and the MacBook Air offers amazing battery life, very, very, very good performance that blows the current lineup out of the water. So from a productivity perspective, actually the MacBooks offer a better value for money and they can do so much more when it comes to pro programs that like we've talked about. One of the things that I'm hoping for is that we will see some of those pro applications come across to the iPad they're already available on the Mac lineup. Now, if you are one of those people out there who absolutely needs it for note-taking, for drawing, for that touchscreen format, then you know what, for the price, you could probably pick up something like a MacBook Air and combine it with the entry-level iPad. That can be paired up with an Apple Pencil and you can also use it as an external monitor for your MacBook. So pretty much for the same price as buying an iPad Pro fully specced out with the upgraded storage, and an Apple keyboard and an Apple pencil, you could probably pick up something like an entry-level MacBook Air, combine it with an entry-level iPad, and get the pencil as well, and it's gonna be around about the same cost. So personally, if I was in the market for a really good productivity setup at the moment, it would most likely be one of the M1 Macs and combining it with one of the iPads. So yeah, there are different ways to argue this. And like I said, I would absolutely be waiting at the moment. If you are in the market for something like the iPad Pro and you've had your eye on it for a little while, unless you have an absolute crushing need to buy one right now, I would absolutely be hanging fire. We don't have long to wait. And if they can bring out a brand new processor that goes toe to toe with the M1 processors that we've seen in the latest MacBooks, 
and it can deliver some pro applications, then we might finally see the iPad really, really muscle into that productivity workplace. I'm hoping for big things this year from Apple and especially when it comes to their silicon and I can't wait to see what they deliver. So let us know what's on your wish list when it comes to the iPad Pro. Is it something that's on your radar and is there something that you want to be able to use for work or are you just taken by the M1 Max? As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, hit that thumbs up button because it really helps YouTube show this off to other people who might be interested as well. And whilst you're there, hit the subscribe button because it helps you see more content from us in the future and it also helps our channel to grow. And in the meantime, throw your questions in the comments below and we'll see you soon for some more awesome content. Bye.